Greetings, my friends. Once again, I come to you. Today, I'm coming to you to talk about the passport, United States passport, the passport card, and the international driving permit, which is also called the international driver's license. All right. Let's get this out the way, the driver's permit. And when you leave the United States you and you want to drive a car, most countries accept the United States driver's license. However, there are countries that require you to augment your license with a permit, an international driver's permit, which is not issued by the government. It is issued by, I have, I received mine through the American Automobile Association, AAA. Now, the thing about uh, also having the international driving uh, license, a permit, is sometimes, for example, I live in Puerto Rico. I have a Puerto Rico driver's license, which is good in Puerto Rico, Guam, the Virgin Islands, the United States, Hawaii, Canada, Alaska, and parts of Mexico. And of course all US territories. However, for some reason you're going to get a police officer or a sheriff or a constable. It's going to give you a hard time saying it's not valid. That's bullcrap. But to cut down on arguing with a police officer I said, well, you know what? I have this two officer and my license. Well, this is, I look up on my license here because too much information. And as you can see here, the United States passport card, I have it covered because it has too much information. And it also has a protective sleeve. Now, the protective sleeve for the passport is card is because the um, passport card, uh, um, you can use it at a special lane at the border, when you're at the border, you can just have the card scanned. So it's electronic. So you have to be careful with that. So it comes in this protective sleeve. You know, and that way no one can come behind you and scan it. I also have a protective uh, wallet for my passport because of the digitalized pages. Um, now, why am I showing you passports and driver's license? Well, let's put it this way. Current events. Current global events, especially in the United States. Uh, you may have to leave. Yes, you may have to leave. Not because of uh, the election results, but for other things. And you may not be able to come back. But to get out of the United States, to get out of here, you need a passport. Now the passport card is only if you are going to travel around the United States and you want supplementary identification because you do not have real ID. And it's only for border crossing between Canada and Mexico uh, and to get on cruise ships going to U.S. territories, Puerto Rico, the Virgin Islands as for that type of uh, and if you're going to go on a cruise from Puerto Rico I mean uh, from the United States to says Puerto Rico to let's say take that long 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 cruise to Guam the American Samoas the Marshall Islands you will need your passport card however there are some people, like me now, 
Uh, let's say I went, I went back to the states and I bought a car. And I wasn't comfortable with the car just being put on a container ship. I would book passage on the merchant ship and travel on a merchant ship with my car. Um, now it's difficult to get your passport. An expedited passport, which this one is, I got it. It's the same as a regular one, but as of that, instead of waiting several, several months or weeks, several, several weeks, I mean, I got it in a matter of days with the card. And you pay a little extra for it. Well, you cannot get an expedited passport because um, the only expedited passports are given, being issued for life and death emergencies. If there's someone in your family that is dying, that it has died, and the doctor or the undertaker can, or the medical examiner can give a certified letter that that has happened, you will get an expedited passport. The regular passport has a backlog in excess of six months now, ever since the pandemic. I'm urging everyone to get the passport. I am really urging you, because something strange has happened. I'm a veteran. My parents are veterans. And I have spoke with people who said that the United, the United States has been through two world wars, the Cold War, a hair's throw from nuclear annihilation via the Cuban Missile Crisis, the 9-11 attacks, and guess what? The federal courts have never, ever closed. That was warning sign number one. Social, social distancing has been implemented, but it is not social distancing. It is anti-social behavior that is being promoted. The correct Linguistic term to prevent the spread of a disease should be physical distancing while remaining humane and social. But look at all these anti-social snitches out there. Oh, he or she don't have a mask or they start fighting. Now let's get into the mask. Second World War Germany, same thing. All the Jews had to wear a mask social engineering. Now you tell me, please, if this virus was as deadly or bad as they said it was, do you think that flimsy mask could protect you? If you had to walk outside every day with that mask, that's just psychological. Trust me, you would have CRBN filters, a full face shield on it, probably even an air pump with a filter on it, or you'll be walking around in an NBC suit, nuclear biological, nuclear biological chemical warfare suit, or a space suit. That would be the norm. You will see like in, you will see like in the fiction movies, people walking around with hardcore gas mask episodes. If the virus was really that bad. I'm not a doctor, and I'm not going to tell you, don't wear a mask, don't do this, and don't do that. But I went through what was called the Asian flu, the Asiatic flu, in the 1950s. Killed a lot of people in the United States. A lot. The courts never closed. Now, people, people can get together and protest, riot, loot burn down, rob and mo have mob robberies, and it's practically sanctioned. But you cannot go into a house of worship. So I said something, something is coming down the pipeline. Get your passport. Put money aside so that you can have money for flight. 
Don't think about sticking around and getting into a fight. Of course, human survival is fight or flight. Forget about the fight. Now you say, oh, how could I save money? Well, you got money in the bank and then you have a big glass jar. Every time you break a bill, put the money in the jar. And take it to the bank and put it in your savings account, not your checking account. Because you're not supposed to touch your savings account. And let's say, hypothetically speaking, you go to a casino. Or you play a lot of number, those four numbers or those three numbers. Let's say, okay, you pay a dollar for a, a three-digit number and you get $500 back. Well, take $2 and put it in your pocket because that's what you had in the beginning. And put the $498 away. The same if you go to the casino. Hypothetically speaking, let's say you go and you play roulette. Hey, it's the, the wheel with the little ball on it, and they put it and it spins and it bounces around and make all that crazy noise and goes and goes on those numbers, red and black numbers. So let's say it's 35 to 1 the odds, which it is. And you put um you walk in with twenty dollars and you play. You get seven hundred dollars back. Put the twenty in your pocket and play with the seven hundred. Be happy if you walk out with that twenty. But if you make more money, take the, the twenty dollars that you walked in with, that's your money, and put the rest away. Put the six hundred and eighty dollars away. You have money accumulating. We call this when I used to, when I was living in Brooklyn, and I had a lot of Jewish friends. And I remember I, I had a, a friend; his father was a rabbi, and he told me he called me by my name and said, "Get your little Jew box." I said, "What?" He says, "Is money where you put your cash when you break a dollar or a big bill? You're not going to use the change, so you put it away." Well. I know people who have used to put the money away in old newspapers and stack them up and put them on in closets or in the attic. Oh, well, I won't do that. What a nice safe box. Or you can go and just put it in your savings account. Take your change, put it away, get a wrapper, wrap it up, go to the bank, savings account, or cash it in, take cash, stash it in the house so you can grab and go. The same with food items. When you go to the store, buy an extra can, an extra packet, an extra container, an extra energy bar, put it away. Because the sign is like when now, for those of you who read the Bible, the prophet Daniel in Babylon with King Nebuchadnezzar, and the hand appeared on the wall and started writing, and no one could read it. Well, the handwriting's on the wall. Something's coming down the pipeline. Everybody can read it. There's no interpretation. You don't need no Daniel. Now, I'm not going to start preaching to you and all that. But things are not going to get better. I remember when I was reading the extraordinary powers that FEMA had. Then I remember in March of 2001, reading the powers that were going to be that were going to be given to the newly conceived National Security Agency. I mean. National Homeland Security Agency, which now is the Department of Homeland Security. So much power. And then I was looking at how governments could grab your property, your farms, your little land, and force you to live in mega cities, which they can lock down. And they have been locking down. Mega cities can become virtual concentration camps. Get your passport. I am not rambling. Now, how old do you have to be to get a passport? Well, if you have a driver's license or a state-issued ID card, a social security card, 
and your original birth certificate and probably maybe they will ask for proof of residency like a, a cable bill, electric bill. It's very rare. Very rare to gonna ask for that. And you are 16 years or older, you don't need your parent to get a passport. There is no statutory requirement that prohibits a United States citizen from getting a passport. None whatsoever. Now here, let me show you. Your visa pages for your passport. Now, the only thing that could prohibit you from getting a passport is if a judge orders that you cannot leave. You are on parole, and the terms of parole or probation says you cannot leave the United States. Then you will not get a passport. However, there is, for children under 16, the two-parent two requirement. Here's where the problem comes in. There are single-family Single, um, how do you say, it? single parent families. This has to be documented and taken down to wherever you want to have your passport process. Most people go to public libraries, um, city hall, uh, the post office. Then you have parents that are separated and one parent says I'm not going to let the child get a passport then you have to go to a judge and the judge will order that you can get the passport then you have the situation where there's a fear that you might be a domestic kidnapping in other words one parent the parents are separated or divorced and uh, there's a fear that the parent that is out of the country might kidnap their child so they will not be able to get a passport because of that it goes into a database now let me tell you when you apply for a passport everything about you is already in the database everything but like I said, they will not, re um, usually they will not uh, refuse to issue a passport based on what you put down on your passport application form. Unless there's a flag in the database. And then they have to, via the Freedom of Information Act, let you know what it is so you can have it removed. Now, for all of you people who say, I'm a sovereign citizen, I'm going to tell you cold fact that cuts no ice. We are going into an age of documentation, papers please, or let me see your papers. Show your passport. Show your license, whatever. Real ID. Everything is information technology. Now, let's get back to the possibility that you have to leave. Always keep a ready bag. Some people call it a bug out bag or go bag. It doesn't have to be because the economy is clashing or civil disobedience. It's because the environment is changing so much that it is psychologically, medically, economically sound for you to leave. We have a large movement here in the United States, defund the police. That is inevitable. Police will be, police will be replaced by 
digital technology, mass surveillance, voice, facial recognition, biometrics. And crime, well, again, if you want to go back to biblical and to people who made the appropriate and correct conclusions, violence will be rampant. We might find ourselves living in the United States under a Mad Max scenario. Or something that's called cultural socialist and social apocalyptic situation. The apocalypse. But not nothing from biblical proportions. Just society itself breaking down. No rule of law. Or even a dictatorship. Get your passport. you will find that a lot of well-to-do Americans are giving up their passport and renouncing their citizenship. A lot of well-to-do Americans are leaving big cities. You don't want to be a knight without armor in a savage land. Get your passport.